dreams. And I'm glad we Thank actually connected this time. I'm so glad as well, and I appreciate you having me on board. Thank you. Okay, kid. Well, you have a great evening, and thank you for being on Night Dreams. Well, I think we lost her there at the very end. Anyway, I'm going to take about a minute to or two break, and then we'll have James on talking about his latest uh, endeavor, uh, well, ghost hunting. Intro music is provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Please check out the Night Dreams Talk Radio website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. Also, if you want to keep our show free of advertising, just hit the donate button. Give a buck or two. Remember, all prior shows are always free to listen to. We at Night Dreams Talk Radio thank you for your support. You're listening to my friend Gary Anderson on Night Dreams Talk Radio, the best in paranormal radio. Well, hi, everybody. Well, we're on the second half, which is going to be about a 30 minutes uh, of talking with James about his latest uh, endeavors in ghost hunting. And James has a Facebook uh, uh, live uh, show that he has on like once or twice a week. In fact, here he is. Well, James, how you doing, my friend? Uh, doing good. How you doing tonight? I am doing so much better. At least I was able to walk to the car uh, today and back up the stairs without collapsing. So I <laughs> big improvement. Yeah, we're going to have to get you some guidelines or something, safety wires. My goodness, that 15-foot fall is not good for anybody. Wow. Well, the good part is I didn't in, I end up in the fish pond. That would have been even, that would have uh, been bad. Uh, yeah, that would have been a nightmare on top of a nightmare. Yeah, considering I haven't changed the water in that fish pond since the beginning of summer. No way. <laughs> that would have been, hey, you know, it was really funny where we live because we have a little mini farm. And, you know, when I moved here, Oh, 20 years ago, my daughter now is 25. That put her at about five years old. Yeah. You know, she came running in the house and she goes, oh, you got to see this real nice kitty cat out there. 
and it's black with a white stripe on it. And then she <laughs> ran out there, and you know, it was not a kitty cat; it was a skunk. <laughs> that what a surprise that was. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, we used to have a huge raccoon too. It was like big as a dog. I swear to God. And I don't know what ever happened to that one. So we, we, we do have little things like that besides our horses and our goats. So how's everything going for you, my friend? Been going great. Been, everything's been going great. I can't complain. I'll tell you about it. Now, why don't you tell the listeners, yes. you have a Facebook live show on Facebook. Yes. Why don't you, yes, I do. Why don't you tell them who your next guest is and when it's going to be on? Okay, my next guest it will be uh, Marjorie Phelps, and that will be at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. Um, and it, it's if you go to my group, Spiritual Paranormal, it's a public group. You can just go in there at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and uh, just tap on the video, and you're in. Easy as that. Oh, wow. And she... And she's a noted author and uh, on reincarnation and true life story about her and all, and other things with the paranormal. She's uh, very well versed in in uh, a couple of books, and she's going to talk about that. And it's going to be extremely interesting. I'm telling you, I, I can't wait because she's got me excited to have her on. She's a real, really lovely, lovely lady. Oh yeah, ask her about Pompeii. Pompeii. A Pompeii. Yeah. yeah, I'll ask you. Okay, because yeah, I mean, she has an interesting story, and you know, oh, I've, I have, I'm sure. I've had her on my show a couple of times, and she is really an awesome person, I, and and bubbly and easy to talk to, and I I think your audience is just going to love having her on. Oh yeah, she's just a lovely soul, very very bright, loving, positive soul, and I, I'm excited to have her on. So, what's been going on? You're in on ghost hunting, and have you had a chance to play with that little thing you won off my show? Oh, that thing is super. I'll tell you, it's, it's a little above my pay grade for the last one I had like that. It doesn't even compare. That, the one I got from you is like uh, uh, Aston Martin or something <laughs> compared to the ones I've had before. But I'm still tinkering with it and learning. You know, it's got so many different gadgets on it. But uh, I didn't have a chance to use it on my last investigation, which was, geez, when was that? Uh... Actually, it was a week ago, well, almost a week ago, last Wednesday. And the reason I didn't get to use it because it was an outside ghost walk, and then there was an investigation toward the end. And being outside, you get a lot of contaminate, outside contamination. And plus, there was 25 people, you know, walking on the walk. And, I'm, and I'm, my job was to be the very last person to make sure nobody fell down or strays or gets lost or anything. And, you know, it was around... 7.30 to 9.30 at night, so there's still people around walking around town, so it's just too much contamination for use for EVPs that night. Unfortunately, however, uh, I've got some things coming up this weekend. Maybe I'll, I will definitely get to use it. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. And now, you had a one heck of an investigation, i got to tell you. You want me to tell you about what all happened there? Oh, yeah. That, well, that's why you're on here for half an hour. <laughs> I want to know what happened. Um, i got to tell you what it, was worth the it was worth the drive. I live about sixty sixty five miles from this town called Medina or Medina. How you I think it's Medina. Maybe you pronounce it. And it's up between somewhere around Akron and Canton, or I mean Akron and Cleveland between there. And, and I live south of there. So anyway, a friend of mine, Sonia, she calls me up and she does a ghost walk up there. She's a psychic and she says, "Hey, I need some help. Can you come up and help me?" And I said, "Sure." You know, I ended up going that night. So. I think I talked to you about it. So, you know, I'm going to go up there and do an investigation and a walk. So I get up there, and I, I've never been to this city before, ever. Not in my life. So I park the car. I, I know where i got to go. I don't see nobody. So it's about a two, two three-block walk. So I'm walking along, and I'm walking, and I get to this one. I'm walking on the sidewalk, you know, and, I'm, and there's storefronts there. And I'm walking. I get in front of this one, and it, boom. It stops me dead in my tra- dead in my tracks, and I can feel them. I can feel them just looking at me. I turn and look, and there's so much energy and spirits and drama and torment going on in that one building. It was incredible. Well, I don't now, know. I didn't now, was it nothing. like you know? was yeah. it James? Was it, it was it evil type of uh, feelings? It wasn't. That, you know what? It wasn't evil. It was more of just. The whole gambit of emotions of 
sadness and some torment and loss and uh, loneliness and just souls that were died there. It was like uh, I'm I'm almost thinking it was like underground railroad maybe might have came through there. Something was what I was picking up, and it was just a lot of like torn family and loss and people dying and just you know a lot of sadness. Wow. But there was just so much of it, it just stopped me on my tracks. It wasn't nothing evil, so to speak. It was just a lot of just negative kind of emotions, you know, just like, bam. It hit me like a wall. No. So anyway, I, I go on walk, and I start like, gather myself and march forward. And then I get up to the walk, you know, and I'm getting there. We're, we have like a little pre-walk. We talk and whatever. And no biggie. So we go on the walk. And I would like to say, I've never been to this place at all. And as we're going, I'm getting, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I've got two spirits that are um, related to someone in the, two. I got two spirits related to people in the crowd. <laughs> There's 25 people in this crowd. And, and one of them was named Irene, and the other one was uh, Beatrice. And they're, they're wanting me to say, you know, reach out to them, but I couldn't because I didn't want to rain on Sonia's parade. And not only that, once you go down that rabbit hole, it, you, you, it's hard to get out of it. Everybody wants information. Where they, you know, they want. To, and I get that, and I understand that. But I just, I didn't have time to do it. it I just wasn't going to do. It wasn't the right place and time to do that. Now, James, so that was with, James. Uh, now, what uh, you're, yeah. you're saying is, if you mention it to one person, everybody else is going to hear it. So then they want to know. Yes, exactly. Believe me, that's happened to me, and I've got stuck for that. I, it happened to me in my group one time. Somebody, I, I, you know, put a question, you got any answers? I'll ask. I'll answer them or any questions. And somebody asked about their mother, and I told them, and they blew them away, and they liked it. Next thing you know, I've got fifteen other people in my group that seen it, and they want it. Next thing you know, I'm I'm on an prop two uh, psychic medium readings of fifteen people, and, <laughs> and the next thing I know, I, I, I'm held up in bed for two days with a headache, and because I wasn't planned or prepared for it. But yeah, so I yeah I didn't want to go down that that alley that night. It wasn't the right time or place for sure. So anyway, I've got these two spirits following me around, pecking at me, <laughs> which sounds bizarre, I know. So anyway, we're walking around this ghost hunt. We're, we're getting around to this other place. Uh, well, it's a coffee shop. We go into the coffee shop. I can't think of the name of it, but we get in there, and I'm. St- and they got this one little room, but it's all glass, like glass walls and a door, but it's closed off. And I got my back to it, and I'm like, I can feel it. There's, there was a spirit behind me, and I... These other two ladies, they were pretty well, they're not, I could tell they had abilities, but didn't know how much, how strong abilities they had. Just, I could tell me around them, I said, um, do you see the, now I'm not even looking, but I could tell where he was. I said, do you see a spirit back there in the corner stand up? And the lady goes, oh my God, I thought I was, I thought I was losing my mind. I said, no, he's sitting there looking at him. She says, yeah, and we both seen it, felt it, felt him. It was a younger uh, black guy, maybe in 20s, just sad you know sitting there in the in the in the coffee shop what an what a town this was my goodness so many spirits in this four block area and and so we keep on with the walk and we're walking then we get to this other house and i'm like oh lord and i have no clue what this house is or nothing but <laughs> i get to the sidewalk and i ask these two ladies i said is it me or is that hitting you like waves of just overwhelming people died in this place and she said yeah so then Sonia says oh yeah this used to be uh the funeral home and the morgue and all this i'm like okay that explains that oh uh, that was just blowed us away you know it was like wow and so that explained that so then we move on you could i mean you could literally if you have any billies at all in this walk you could feel the certain houses were just they just hit you like it's almost like it's like a big rush of air hits you, but the wind isn't blowing, it. <laughs> and you can just feel it. It's palpable, and it's like whoa. And then you get all the emotions that go with that stuff. It's incredible. So then we wrapped it up at the end of the night, and we're sitting. We we're at the cemetery there in downtown Medina, and she was explaining that there was a caretaker that used to, in the eighteen hundreds, uh, you know, took care of everything, dug the the graves, and took care of the of the headstones and the grounds and everything. And she says, he's been seen many, many times out in the cemetery here. He's been seen here, you know, as a spirit floating around, walking around, doing his thing. He's very attached to it. 
So we all looking, and nobody's seeing, seeing him or anything. And we're still looking. And then, the, then she put, 